In this video series, we're going to take a look at how we migrate from Exchange 2003 to Exchange 2007. This first video, we'll take a look at our prerequisite requirements, determining what we have and don't have as far as our Active Directory and existing configuration goes. And then, in subsequent videos, we'll go through the actual installation and then the steps required to migrate to users and ultimately the retirement steps of the server. So to begin, I'm sitting on the server that I plan on installing Exchange 2007 onto. And if we take a look at it, what I have here is a Windows 2003 server running the x64 bit edition. I've also got the current service packs on there. And you'll see I've given it about one and a half gigabytes worth of RAM. And it's a reasonably fast processor. In addition, this server is currently a member of the LearnExchange.local Active Directory domain, and it's a member server because you typically do not want to install Exchange onto a domain controller because you'll compete the Active Directory database with the Exchange server. Now, a few other things to note. This server is not running Exchange 2003 because you don't upgrade an existing Exchange 2003 server to Exchange 2007. You build a brand new server running Windows 2003 x64, install Exchange 2007 on it, and it will know, because it's part of an Active Directory that already contains a 2003 server, what it needs to so it can coexist with the other one. Because the migration process is a coexistence migration process, not an in-place or same server upgrade. OK, well now let's go take a look at our domain controller. And since I'm sitting on my Exchange server, or the server I plan to put Exchange onto, I've opened some remote desktop sessions here. This is to my domain controller. And when we open it up, I'm going to open up Administrative Tools, Active Directory Users and Computers. Now, here we find I've built a couple users, built a user called Zeus and I built a user called Linus. I've also got a group in here called Office Team, which is a security group that's also we're going to find is mail enabled. I've got a contact in here. I've got Vivian in there. And you'll see that it's for the Active Directory domain called LearnExchange.local, which is the name of my Active Directory. Also, if I right click on Active Directory and select Raise Domain Functional Level, you'll find that currently my server and my Active Directory domain, more importantly, is in a Windows Server 2003 functional level, saying all my domain controllers are 2003 or above. It's recommended you do that for Exchange because that's going to give you the most efficient replication of all the Active Directory replication models. Now, the downside is, is you can't have any Windows 2000 domain controllers. You can still have servers, just no Windows 2000 domain controllers. And you especially can't have any Windows NT4 domain controllers. So that's what we're looking at as far as my domain controller goes. In addition, I have a Windows 2000, or sorry, an Exchange 2003 server set up here called EX2003 SRV. And if we go and open up System Manager on it, we'll see what our current Exchange 2003 configuration looks like. Well, taking a look at administrative groups, we see I have one administrative group, and in there is my Exchange server. And you'll see I have under routing groups, I have one connector for connecting to the internet, the internet mail SMTP connector. In addition, if we right click on the organization name, Learn Exchange here, and choose properties, we find that my operation of my Exchange network is in native mode. And if you plan on migrating to Exchange 2007, your Exchange server must be in, or your Exchange network must be in native mode, which says you don't have any Exchange 5.5 servers. All your servers are running Exchange 2000 or above. OK, well, we don't need to do anything else in the Exchange uh, System Manager on our Exchange 2003 server. So now let's take a look at the sort of client setup I might have. Well, I have an XP client here, a system running Windows XP, and I'm currently opened up into the administrator's mailbox. If I click on New, we can go ahead and send each of our users an email message. Now let's go ahead and say, Hello, users. We are about to migrate to Exchange 2007. You shouldn't notice a thing if we do everything right. 
Okay, so I've got the ability to send my users, emails working fine, and to help simulate a larger environment or some things you may have, I actually have some public folders built. Because believe it or not, they're one of the trickier parts of Exchange 2007 to work with. And ones that could come to give you some trouble during a migration from Exchange 2003 to Exchange 2007. So, I've got a public folder here with company events. I've got one here, whoops, got one here with human resource documents and customers and suppliers. So we've got a whole bunch of stuff inside some public folders. So, let's now go and put in the Exchange 2007 CD-ROM. Okay, with the Exchange 2007 CD-ROM in here, let's go ahead and open it up. And we find it will give us kind of a checklist of what we have and don't have installed. Well, let me tell you what I have installed so far in my Exchange server. One, I have the .NET Framework loaded. Two, I have Microsoft Management Console 3.0. And if those aren't installed, it will go ahead and actually give you a prompt to click on it and just let you go right to the appropriate site to download it. For example, I don't have PowerShell loaded on this system yet. So it'll take me to the Microsoft website where I can download PowerShell. And let's go here. We need the PowerShell. So let's see where they have the link to it. Oh, come on. There we go. PowerShell for Windows Server 2003 X64. So I need to download that. And PowerShell is a new scripting language for Windows, which is why it's important that it be loaded on my server. So let me go ahead and download this. Gonna have to add that to my trusted list of sites to visit. Don't need to have the JavaScript or the imaging pages. Should be able to get my download though. Okay, let's get the download. There we go. It's not a huge download because it leverages power or it leverages the .NET framework for most of what it does. So we'll install PowerShell. And presto, PowerShell is now installed. Now, what else have I installed so far? Well, there's one other component on Windows that I've installed that I need to let you know I did. I'm going to go to Start, Control Panel, Add Remove Programs. And under Add Remove Windows Components, I need to point out that before you can install Exchange 2007, you do have to install IIS, which is located under Application Server, Internet Information Services, and you have to go down and check the box for World Wide Web Service. Now, if you're used to installing your Exchange 2003, you know you used to have to install SMTP and NNTP. Those are not required for Exchange 2007 because it includes its own engine for SMTP, and the NNTP functionality is gone. So, we just need to check the box for World Wide Web Service, and that will enable the components we need and let us do the install. So, let's see how we're doing. Hey, notice our install plan here has taken us through step one, where .NET Framework 2 was MMC and 3 was Windows PowerShell. So now we're ready to actually install Microsoft Exchange. And with that, I'm going to stop this recording and go grab the next video in the series.